A blessed Sabbath afternoon to everyone. For those who don't know me this afternoon, I am Sister Kizi. 
And I am just here to remind you this evening that songs of praise is on. So call a friend, call a neighbor, call the kids, call everyone. We don't want anyone to be left out this afternoon. And those online, please share the link. Share the link to your friends in America, in Canada, in India, in Africa, wherever they may be. I say share the link. Mark 13.10 says, sorry, reminds us that the gospel must be preached to all nations. And we are so blessed and fortunate this evening with internet and phones. So let's share the gospel to all nations. I will now invite Sister Wendy to open us in prayer this afternoon. Good afternoon. Let us stand as we approach the throne of grace. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for spared life and for bringing us out here once again where we can share your words. We ask you, dear Father, to forgive us of all our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness and hear our prayer this afternoon, Lord. Father, we come before you asking you to come divinely close to us. Be with us proceedings this evening. Be with those that has to take part, those that are singing, be tuned their voices, those that are praying those that are preaching father god we ask you to just be with this proceeding this evening be with the equipment and help it to work at its best and when this proceedings shall come to an end may we all receive the blessing those that receive it online those that are here with us this afternoon may we all receive the blessing that you have in store for us this evening is my prayer in jesus name So you know here at Sound of Praise, we are always happy to have you all join us, right? And because of that happiness and that joy we have, we will now invite Sister Renice to bring a special welcome to everyone this afternoon. Pleasant Sabbath, everyone. I'm not hearing them. I'm not hearing them. Online viewers, happy Sabbath to everyone. Okay, I'm hearing them. I'm hearing them. Online viewers, happy Sabbath, and we are glad to have you. And I hope that your sitting with us will be enjoyed and you will be blessed. To all our present viewers, I am glad to have you all in front of me so that you know this welcome won't be for just the online viewers, but for all that is here. And it might encourage those who are viewing online to come. Come and take part of the present experience. You know, there's a saying, a small step, small things, a small step in the right direction can lead to a big, the biggest step in your life. Right. I will say it again. Something, sometimes the smallest step in the right direction can lead to the biggest step in your life. Amen. So you know what I want you all to do? To make that step for Jesus. To serve Jesus. So, online viewers, I hope that you feel blessed today and that this program will encourage you to make that step. That it will turn out to be the biggest decision that you could ever make. Thank you, Sister Renice. Okay, so in the book of Psalms 105, it reminds us that let everything that have breath do what? I didn't hear that. Do you all have breath? Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. 
And I know this evening that everyone under the sound of my voice have breath. So I am going to invite everyone this afternoon. Things mightn't be going the way you all want it. Finances mightn't be where you want it. Your health mightn't be at the best. But the words say, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. So I invite everyone, as Brother Franco comes and brings some inspiration, let's get up, let's dance, let's sing, and let's praise the Lord this afternoon. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We want to be giving God some praise today as we make a joyful sound unto the Lord. Wherever you are, we invite you to join with us as we give God some praise today. This afternoon, we want, to be, we want to try and sing some way back, some oldies choruses this evening. So we're calling out all those, uh, Sister Grant, Sister Darby, um, Brother Georgie, Sister Patricia, Sister Vicky, um, Roy, Sister Ruth in Pennsylvania, uh, um, Maiden Ursula, all those old, olden folks. We want to ask you to join with us as we sing those oldies in Jesus' name. In the sweet by and by. In the sweet by and by. You remember that one? In the sweet by and by. In the sweet by and by. I have a mansion so bright and so fair.
Hallelujah. Is somebody loving Jesus this morning, this evening? Praise the Lord. And you know what? You didn't love Jesus first at all. Yeah, he loved us first. In that he sent his son to die. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Hallelujah this morning, this evening. Praise the Lord. Oh, we're just giving God some praise today. I'm just transitioning from morning to evening. So good evening, everybody. In Jesus' name. Let's do our breathing ex exercise one time. Hallelujah, 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 Kayla. Praise the Lord. And fill your lungs. Let's go. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Pastor Hamilton, and he holding out the praise now. So he passed the Hamilton holding out the praise. Come on, all in front. Stand up, stand up. We're going with this praise. And when your praise is finished, then you sit down, all right? I want one, Debbie, you're, cheating, you're, you're giving my praise. I want one praise, Debbie. Yeah? Let's go. Yeah, salvation was a thing that money could buy. Oh, yes. The poor will die. Come on, let's sing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. see pastor. Pastor have on his mask and he stand up watching my eye open big. That, that is his praise. Have mercy Jesus. Hey! Let's continue giving God some praise. So in the pressure see So in the pressure see Have his time is coming by and by And so in the pressure see
name. Amen. All right. Amen. So let it be. Sweat in Jesus' name, my child. Lord, I'll lift your name on high. I'll lift your name, Lord. I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad. Yeah. 
afternoon, but that was some praise. I am sure people are still off their seats saying, more, more. Is there anything better than praising God? I don't think so. But anyhow, we have to go on. We can't praise, sing, and praise all afternoon, right? So Psalm 119, verse 105 says that your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You know, without the word, we'll be walking in darkness. So we need to hide up that word in our heart. So we invite Brother Zarian to come this evening and test each and every one of our knowledge this evening to see how much of that word we have hidden in our heart this evening. A pleasant good afternoon, everyone. And a pleasant Sabbath to you, wherever you are. I miss you so much last week. But we are back today for another episode of Kuwis Style. Just because we love you, today's quiz will be super easy. So everyone should be getting a full 100%. So come on, get your pen and paper and get close to your device so you can type your answers in the chat. Let's go. Question one. What were the names of the couple who lied to the apostles about the offering they brought to the church? I repeat, what were the names of the couple who lied to the apostles about the offering they brought to the church? The answer is Ananias and Sapphira. You can read their story in Acts 5, verses 1 to 11. Question 2. About how old was the lame man who Peter healed while begging at the temple gate called Beautiful? Was it 20 years? 30 years? 40 years? Or we don't know? I repeat. About how old was the lame man who Peter healed while begging at the temple gate called Beautiful? Was it 20 years? 30 years? 40 years? Or we don't know. Answer? According to Acts 4 verse 22, it says that the man was above 40 years old when he received this miracle of healing. Hey friends, don't matter how old you are or how long you are in a situation, God still brings you deliverance. Somebody say amen. amen. I feel like preaching today. Woo! But let's get back to the quiz. Question three. The Bible says that all who accept Jesus are given power to become sons and daughters of God. What is another name for this power? I repeat. The Bible says that all who accept Jesus are given power to become sons and daughters of God. What is another name for this power? Answer. This power that makes us sons and daughters of God is the Holy Spirit. Yes, Matthew 3 verse 11 says, we will be baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. 
And Acts 1 verse 8 says, We receive power when we receive the Holy Ghost. Question 4. After Judas betrayed Jesus and committed suicide, who did the apostles choose to replace him? Was it Matthias? Barnabas? Paul? Or Stephen? I repeat, after Judas betrayed Jesus and committed suicide, who did the apostles choose to replace him? Was it Matthias? Barnabas? Paul? Or Stephen? That answer is... Acts 1, 15 to 26 says that Matthias was chosen to replace Jesus. And question 5. Which disciple of Jesus was stoned to death for preaching that Jesus was the Christ? I repeat. Which disciple of Jesus was stoned to death for preaching that Jesus is the Christ? Answer, that disciple was Stephen. You can catch that account in Acts 7, verses 59 and 60. Anybody here ready to die for preaching the gospel? Don't answer. But give it some thought. Friends, that's it for quiz time today. You all did great today. I want to encourage you to review the Bible passages this week so you can get a clearer understanding of God's words. Until then, stay safe. Stay smiling. Stay faithful. Until next week when we meet again for another episode of Quiz Time. Back to you, Auntie Kizi. Thank you, Brother Zarian. Thank you. Thank you for testing our knowledge this evening. You know, in the Old Testament, you heard a lot about people who praise God with harps and, and, and strings and horns and all these different things. And you know, Sound of Praise members also have continued with this tradition. We praise God here with all sorts of instrument. And we will now invite Brother H to come and bless our hearts with an instrumental this afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone.
older age for that instrumental. You know, the younger ones in the midst might know this instrument, but I can remember as a child, my father used to love to play that instrument. All right, so thank you very much. And I like to quote scriptures for everything, right? So Psalm 22 says that I will stand up before the congregation and I will testify of the wonderful things God have done. There is someone here today who wants to testify about something good that God have done in their life. And there, this person is known as Granny Fit, Miss Wilma Skeet. So let's welcome her as she testifies about God's goodness in her life this afternoon. Listen, good afternoon to everybody. Afternoon. All who don't know me, my name is Wilma Skeet. I'm super grand. I used to be a runner, a cricketer, and a boxer, right? But I want to tell you all that no man is an island. No man is an island. During the boxing thing, a strong, a, a busy, always busy. I got, you see me here, and when you walk through again, I cry across there. But I get a knockout punch. <laughs> I don't know who hit me, but I get it. And when I wake up, I was in Point Ponte Hospital. Right? Going to the hospital with a tube all over me. My hand tied up so all over, whatever. And I asked in God, Father God, please, what go and help me, please, Jesus. And I've been praying and praying. I can't eat. The only thing I could do is drink water. Mm. Can't do nothing for myself. Just lie down there. Nurses had to come there to bathe me, they had to do everything for me. And I'm talking to God every day, every day, every night. Amen. I'm talking to him. And the doctors come in, they're taking tests, they're taking things. Doc, what's going on? They don't know. A night, a dreaming, right? I, I say it's a dream, but I thought it was real, right? But it was a dream. That I lie down and like the Lord sent his angels, mm. two army men and a nurse, all in white. They come with a sack, something, you know, sack, and put me through it. Put me through and bring me back out, put me back on the bed and say, she's going to be all right. Mm. So in the morning when I got up, the morning, I saw the same news. I said, what are you doing last night? Because my mouth hot, eh? <laughs> I said, what are you doing last night? She said, nothing. I said, yes. She said, no, Miss Keith. I said, well, who are the two army men and the thing? Well, you put me through and pull me back out and tell me I'm going to be out. She said, no, Miss Keith, maybe you was dreaming. So you see? The Lord sent his angels to do that for me, Amen. right? The morning, Debbie come and look for me. I said, Deb, and I tell her what it is. Same time the doctors come. They, they talk, they talk, they talk to Debbie. They say, well, they'll watch me for a day, and the next day I'll go home, right? And the next day I really came home, right? And look, my head standing here now. Amen. I mean, I was a little weak. I was a little thing. But I had us to go back. When I went back, everything was clean. Nothing. They can't find nothing up to today. Yeah. They can't find yeah. nothing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I thank God for what he have done for me. Yeah. Right? And I wouldn't be that busy, buddy. Then I have to calm down. Yeah. Yes, I have to calm down. Because... When I was here, as I walked so dirty behind me, she afraid I fall. She afraid that it's never this book she. <laughs> yeah. were walking behind me for. Yeah. So Lord Father, I thank God for my daughter. I thank God for everybody who prayed for me, all my children, my grandchildren, all my friends. Amen. So Father God, here I am today. 
Super Grana Bean. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you, Granny Fit. Thank you very much. I will now like to invite Sister Debbie to come and pray for our community. Pray for those that are sick. Oh, I'm not sure if she fit like her mommy, but I, we will see. I want her to come and pray for those in the community that are crying out for help. Those that don't know God. Those that have lost their job. Those that have felt that they have lost everything and they are down in that valley. Sister Debbie, come and pray for the community this afternoon. To answer Sister Kizzy, no, I'm not even half as fit as mom is, but by God's grace, I'll keep strong. Amen. Shall we stand for prayer this afternoon? Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. Gracious and merciful Father, Lord, we are so thankful for your love and your watch care over us. We thank you, O oh God, for being God in our lives. We thank you, O oh God, that we can come here yet another Sabbath day to give you praise and glory, O oh God. Father, as we come, we ask that you forgive us. Forgive us where we have fallen short of your glory, O oh God. Forgive us for our unrighteousness and our unbelief, dear Father. And Lord, as we lift our praises and ourselves before you as living sacrifices, O oh God, I pray that you would accept our offering even now. Amen. Fathers, we come on behalf of every member bowing here, dear God, and every member of our communities, dear Lord. I pray, O oh God, that you would be with us, that you would send your holy angels, O oh God, to encamp around us at this time. That you would be with those who are not well, Father, because you are the great physician. And we only need to ask, O oh God, and you will supply that need of healing. Amen. Father, I pray that even as you pass by every bedside at this time, every person who is asking for healing, dear Lord, that you would not just heal our physical bodies, but that you would heal our sin sick soul, O oh God. Amen. So that when you come in your eternity, dear Father, we would be saved with you in your eternal kingdom. Amen. Help us not to perish, O oh Father. Lord, I pray for those who at this time may be going through some financial situation, dear God. I pray that you would continue to supply all our needs, O oh Father, according to your riches in glory. Amen. And we know, O oh God, that you are rich in glory, so that our needs will be supplied according to your will if we only believe, O oh God. So, Father, I pray that even as you supply our needs, that it would be enough that we would be able to share with someone who may be in greater need than us, O oh God, and do not know how to ask. But Lord, I pray that you would help us, that we would be able to just share with someone who would pass by even now, dear God. Father, I want to pray for the young people and our children at this time, O oh God. Father, you know some of them have gone astray. But we ask, O oh Heavenly Father, that you would trouble their hearts even now, so that they would come back to you, come back to the fold of safety, O oh Father. Lord, for those who are viewing us online, who may be troubled and lonely, don't know which way to turn, O oh God, you are a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. So I pray, O oh God, that even by your Holy Spirit, you would speak to their hearts even now, dear God, and comfort them even at this time. Continue to grant us your mercy and your grace, O oh God. Bless the pastor as we await a word from him today, dear Lord, and even Kayla as she blesses us, dear Father. Lord, I pray for your continued guidance and protection upon us. Continue to bless our ministry, O oh God. May we grow from strength to strength, and may hearts continually be blessed by this ministry, O oh Father. Continue to be with us, is my prayer in Jesus' most holy and wonderful name. Amen. 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 You may have your seats. Amen. Remember that there is power in prayer. We will now have our hearts blessed as Sister Kayla comes and sings for us this afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. of my 
the mountain is the same God in the valley. So indeed, we had a great time with all the singing, the praising, all the testimony, the quiz time, and all these things. I call these the, the, the pre-meal snack, the appetizers, right? I'm not sure if anyone know what is a main course. The main course is actually the biggest part of the meal, you know, the best part of the meal. Right, so we invite Pastor St. Bernard to come and give us the main course of this service. So Pastor St. Bernard, come and share the word with the people this afternoon. Oh yeah. Good evening everyone. You know one thing about it, I didn't want to stop the service at all. The music and of course the instrumental young lady, may God continue to bless you. It's very nice, nicely done and everyone that took part this afternoon. How are you this evening everybody? For those of you online, it's always a privilege to stand here and of course the female boxer that knows how to knock out men. <laughs> Super grand. May God continue to bless you. We have Brother Anthony and our pastor and family here. We are happy to have all of you here this evening. And uh, we pray that God will bless
bless you through the message that you're about to hear. Shall we pray? Father, this is the time that you glorify yourself. Into your hand I commend my mouth, voice, and mind. May you take charge and glorify yourself, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, what happened? Why you could come in here just so? You crazy or what? You had to change your clothes? You can't come here just like that? We don't do it like that down here, no? You have to have proper attire. It's a marriage feast. Oh, you didn't know? Well, you know now. So make sure, change your clothes. Because you will de be debarred from entering here. I've entitled the message, Too Good to Put Out. And we're going to talk this evening about a very special feast that our God has gone to prepare for us. You know, when you have a wedding, there are some things you do not forget. Well, of course, some people do, unfortunately. But when you have a wedding, these are the things you take note of. Date, time, dress code, venue, and the amount of guests. Because everyone that comes, look forward to the time you're going to watch the bride. You don't pay attention to the men too much. But when the bride comes, you stand up and you're bold. And you look at her and you say, yeah, man, she looks good. But then after all that paraphernalia, you start looking for the time when you're going to eat. And since weddings are feasts, we're going to have some fun this afternoon. I want to tell you that, number one, no one likes to be embarrassed. So if you are planning for God's wedding, and God's return, there are some things that I must tell you. Number one, Matthew 22, verse 2, talks about a parable. Matthew 22, verse 2, talks about a parable. The parable speaks about a marriage which is indicative of the kingdom of God that will come. And as a result, when you read verses 3 and 4 of the passage, you will discover that all were invited. But still, there were some individuals who did not wish to be there. And that is a sad thing. Because when God prepares, he prepares the best for his children. And because he prepares the best, you can expect the best. And there are some things that will be there that you don't know what will be there. So you need to pay attention. I want to start by saying, John 3.16 says, for God so what? And since he loved the world and he gave his only begotten son, then it means that the entire world is invited to the marriage feast. Provision has been made for all of us. And the good thing about it is God says to us in John 14, 1 to 3, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are what? Many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place. Yes, sir. And if I go, I will come again. Amen. And receive you unto myself. That where you are. Oh, oh, you're paying attention. That where I am, you will be where? Also. Now. All persons who are married, those of you online, and those who are here, raise your hand. Yes, no, you have to do it over. Some of you are doing this kind of a slow motion kind of, I can't handle that here this evening. So you're going to do it over. All of you online and here, the live audience. Mm-hmm. I'm watching you. Who are married, raise your hand. Timing is excellent. Good. And there's a reason why I'm doing that. Because you see, you look forward to the day when you're married to spend time with your companion. It's the same thing God wants for you and I. So since he's preparing a lavish 
feast. He wants all of his children. But there's a, there are some things that you must understand in order to get there. This particular parable gives a description of some of the things that will be there. It talks about fatted calf and what and what and what. But you see, my dear friend, though it is in parable, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9 clears, clearly says, I have not seen nor air heard, neither have it entered into the thoughts of man the things that God has gone to prepare for him. So there are some things you can think about, but there are some things you can long to see because we do not know everything that will be there. Therefore, the expectation is heightened. The hunger is there. Therefore, brothers and sisters today, make it a duty to make your peace calling an election sure. So that when we get over yonder, we will know the things. And not only that, but you will see Jesus face to face. Amen. I want to add, there are some people when they hear the wedding, some people make, it, they make light of it. Oh, I don't have to be there. And you will find that in verse 5. Because my pericope this evening is Matthew 22. They made light of it. That's in verse 5. And I want to tell you, my dear friend, since we are speaking about the return of Jesus, you can agree with me online and here this evening that there are people that make light of this promise that Jesus had made. One thing I am very clear about in my mind, that our God does not lie. And what he says he means, what he means he says. Therefore, we are confident that if he says he will return, he will. And there are things that he has shown the world and have said to the world through his prophets and through himself that we can examine to authenticate so that our faith is true and faithful because God is true and faithful. Second Peter chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. There shall come in the last days coffers, walking after their own loss, Verse 4 says, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. That is not so. Let's examine it. 2 Timothy 3.3. 3. Fierce, false accusers, incontinent. There's an intensification of these things that are listed in that verse. Do I have a witness? Watch, never in our time have we ever seen the amount of violence you're seeing now. School, when I was a little boy going to school, you think you could have be rude to a teacher? You'd be given some smokes if you don't have, where you, where you cannot take no strokes. And since I don't have much, I can't afford to take strokes. So I used to be an obedient child. You understand me? But now, children are fighting. Big people are trying to separate them and they're still trying to trade punches. And I'm saying to you, this is a sign that says Christ is coming again. Yes, sir. I'm not finished yet. You have people who are bold faced. They watch you in your eyes. And they lie like horse trotting. And they have no shame. But they are bold with it. This we are seeing today. And I'm saying based on what God says. In his holy word. We can trust when he says I will come again. Yes, sir. Gun violence in the United States. How many more must die? Until men recognize their need for Jesus. Could you imagine you send your children to school? All the children in the house and all the parents in the house. And those of you online. Can you imagine what it's like to send your children to school? And you expect that your children are protected. And then somebody else. Who is not under the control of the spirit of the living God. Will come to that very school with a gun 
shoot up the place, kill your child. Mm, and still men are debating Christ is not coming. Brethren, God said these things will come to pass. And it's not because God delights in seeing men suffer and, and in pain. That's not it. But he wants people to turn from their wicked ways and put their trust in his word. If you have a Bible and the Bible says things and it never comes to pass, will you trust? You say that's a stupid thing. Man, follow man, write that. Man didn't write the Bible. Ordinary men didn't do it. It was men moved by the Holy Spirit. And since God knows the future, he tells you in advance what to expect. Amen. That's why this evening I'm bold for my father in heaven. Because our father has spoken in front. And I've told you what to expect. And if he said it, he means it. Therefore trust and hold on to your faith. Oh, yes. yes, lovers of pleasure more than the lovers of God. Verse 4. <laughs> Storm coming and man calling fed. Yep. Mm? We have a pestilence outside here called COVID-19 that have found ways to morph into different forms. And men will fed and call it a COVID fed. You see people dying. Hmm? You know that there are some friends that we have lost because of this illness. And still, that can happen to me. It can happen to you. Not until. And that, I want to make a point here this afternoon as we examine this, th these things. There are some people, just like AIDS, who will be carriers of this particular disease. And they will not show any symptoms up in front. And if you're not wearing the mask, now if you notice, I took off mine because I have to preach. I need my nose, I need my mouth, I need my air. But most of the times I preach with the mask on. I'm not dead yet and I ain't fall down yet. But I want you to understand, take all the precautions that are necessary because COVID does not have a face that you could say this one or that one, but it's a pestilence. And God have said in front, according to his word, Matthew 24, verse 7, pestilence, verse 6, you have wars, and of course, earthquakes in diverse places. Just a couple days ago, in this very month, we had two earthquakes in Trinidad. Are you still saying that God is not coming? When you look at Luke 21, verse 25, upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. We have high food prices. You have lost of jobs. Some people are committing suicide. When you look at the gas station and you spend, those of us who are drivers, you fill your gas tank. And when you look at the price before the week is through, if not within a day or two, you have to spend more. And you're still saying that the master is not coming and his words are not true? My dear friend, let not the devil fool you. God never lies. And he always sends a warning in front before destruction comes. I want to hasten on. Verse 6 of Matthew 22 says, When those folks who were sent by God to advise and to invite, advise and invite those to come to the marriage feast, the text says that they were entreated them spitefully and they slew them. Do you know that when you are invited to weddings, it's because you are highly favored? It means that the person considers you so much that they want you to be a part of the celebration. Right. It means that the person is highly chosen and highly regarded. Therefore, you are a person of class. But some folk, when you are invited and they watch you, they become envious of you. Eh? How oh, is them they could invite and not me? So instead of listening and accepting, they decided, I'm going to kill you. 
for coming and telling me these things. But I want to tell you, my dear friend, though they may be vexed with you, the master chooses because of those who chose to accept him. Do I have a witness? You see, it's your close friend and somebody that regards you and you have premier regard for that you will invite to your feasts. Because you consider them and they consider you. And I want to tell you, my dear friend, today since we are speaking about the return of our Savior, Jesus Christ, I want to let you know this afternoon, if God calls you to come to the kingdom of heaven, he's going to keep you from falling and to present you faultless until the day you see his face. John chapter 1 verse 12 says, as many as what? Receive him. To them gave he power to become the sons and daughters of God. In other words, the word for power in the Greek is a word called excusia. The right of sonship and daughtership given by a parent. So if he calls you, he will keep you. All because you chose to accept him. Number two. Though folks may be upset with you because you are highly favored and blessed too, Isaiah 54, 17 says, no weapon that's formed against you. You know, if you were doing evil, a lot of folk, nothing good, bad stock, bad seed, bad person, and they will ridicule you. But when you're doing the right thing, instead of encouraging you, they decide to tear you apart. I want to tell you today, brothers and sisters, no weapon that's formed against the child who puts their confidence in God will ever be defeated. Because the Bible says every tongue that rises up against you will God condemn in judgment. For this is the heritage of his children. Therefore, stay faithful and stay in the grip of God's grace so that you will be too good to put out. I'm not finished yet. Matthew 5, 10 to 12, pulling out salient parts of the passage. It says, blessed are you which are what? Persecuted for righteousness sake. For yours is what? The kingdom of heaven. Blessed when men shall revile you and persecute you and say a man of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. Let me tell you something friend. We wrestle not against flesh and blood but we, we fight against a devil who does not want you to be happy. He does not want you to be in the grip of God's grace because he was there and he got kicked out. And since he got kicked out of heaven, he came down here to make mass and to prevent you from receiving the blessings of Almighty God. But I want to tell you something this evening. No demon can stop you from the love of God. Amen. That's found in Romans 8. What can separate you from the love that is found in Christ Jesus? Nothing. Nothing. So regardless of what is done or what is said, remember he has the world in his hands. And he's going to preserve that which is gold because you are trophies of his gold that he wants you to be so that somebody outside there will be encouraged to remain faithful to him. But we must make up our minds. Yes, pastor, you saying that because you named pastor. No, it's not. It's because I too have experienced what it is by the grace of God to remain faithful and to be under attack. But I'm still here. You know why? Because his grace is sufficient. And his strength is made perfect in righteousness. Let me tell you something out there. You folk outside there. I want you to know this. Many times... There are some struggles in order to get ready for the wedding. We need to talk this evening here. We're not talking theory. We need to be practical. There are some struggles that you go through when you are preparing for the wedding. 
Sometimes you may not have all the money. Sometimes you may not think you're fit to be married. Sometimes you are so depressed and sorrowful that you think that you cannot make it. But I've got a word for you this afternoon. You know why we could praise and make noise in this place? Because we have a hope. You see, dear friend, there is a text in the scriptures. And I believe that when we're speaking about God, we must use his word. Because it is in his word we find strength, release, power, deliverance, and hope. Yeah. Isaiah 61 verse 3 says, he will give you what? Beauty for ashes. Oh, yeah. The oil of joy for mourning. The spirit of the garment of praise. I try attesting you. I know it very well. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. When the Holy Spirit is in your life, you are able, because you see, friend, the spirit comforts those who mourn. The spirit strengthens you when you have no strength. And the spirit gives you the ability to see beyond the circumstance and see you can make it to the very end. That's why you do not walk alone. That's why we hold on to Jesus. Because he maketh strength available to those who have none. That's why this evening, don't let nobody put you out. Don't be as the fool in that parable I quoted just now. Do not come to God without a wedding garment. Understand, he says, come as you are. But when, he, when you come to him, he's going to transform your life. He's going to change you from where you are and make you where he wants you to be and who you want to be. So that the drunkard is no longer a drunkard. The cuspid is no longer a cuspid. The crook is no longer a crook, but he walks straight. Because why? There is a deliverance and power that is found in the love that is found in God. Do you understand me this afternoon? Some people who are engaging in crime is because they feel unloved and they think society have turned their back on them. We know the devil is behind all of those things. But I have had the privilege of speaking to some young people who you will not want to talk to. And because I've spoken with Spend some time with. And they realize, hey, somebody still cares. And those kinds of love that God will give to you when everybody doesn't give you a prayer is those kinds of opportunities that break the heart of some people and they turn from their wicked ways and they come home. Therefore, today, what about you? Are you willing? If you are willing, God will make a way for you. Job, under his pressure and under trial, it says in Job 19.26, yet in my very flesh I will see God. And Job went through hell all because of his faithfulness. In the end, Job triumphed. You can triumph too this afternoon. I go to verse 10 of Matthew 22. So in his love for us, God went out. They said, listen, I'm sending others to warn you. That's what I am doing. And in doing it, he called good and he called bad. The good, the ugly, and the indifferent. Because we can't see the heart God does. And he knows people better than you know. And that's why you hold on. Because let me tell you something. If you're a pretensive person and people get to understand that, they will not invite you to their functions. Because they will see you as a scam. A cheat, a liar. But when you are sincere, brothers and sisters... God always makes a way for the pure in heart, for they shall see God. That's what Jesus says. And you have that opportunity this afternoon, online and in here. 
That's what he wants. I want to tell you this. There came a time in the parable. I call it inspection time. Now. Past the stage of the bride and the groom. Past that stage. Say in reception hall now. And this individual decided to come in there without a wedding garment. But you see, all of us know that when you go to weddings, some of us who are dishonest try trickery. So I'm going to quote something here for you now, given an experience of a friend of mine. <laughs> the friend said he had his wedding. And they looked at their list. So his list he had. His wife had hers. And they knew how much people they were catering for. But then when the wedding came. Some folks didn't come. As now that happens now. Some didn't come to the wedding. In, in terms of church service. But they went to the reception. But then why is in the reception. The groom and the wife. Started to look. And they observed that there were some individuals that they didn't know. So they sent out their protocol officer. Hannah, I'm seeing four individuals I don't know. How it is that they got past security? Could you please check them out? And this is the joke. Some people are real bold face, you know. They sit down, they burp, and they eat their guts full. And whilst they're going back for second and third chair, protocol officer says, hello there. Where are you from? So and so. Who invited you to here? The groom. The other two, it's four of them. The other two says, we're watching me, so I'm the bride know me. That time is lie like horse trotting. So the protocol officer sends back the notice. These two said, I know you. This two said, and they said, hear what? This is how we will drop it. You don't wild them. You wait when they're going up. That is pressure. Wait when they're going up to eat. Go back in the going back in the line and wait when they reach right up to the servers. Get the security officers and put handcuffs. I can't tell you what work the man was doing. I can't give you that online. But they got the handcuffs on those two. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? Oh, what are you locking me up? They say inside here, there'll be no stormers. And that same thing is going to happen in heaven. There'll be no stormers in heaven. Yes, and you talk about ball. You ever see big man ball? Well, they ball like 10,000 because they took them out of the reception in handcuffs. That is embarrassment. That time they burp already you know, and they eat their belly full and they're going up for more food. You think it easy? I'm telling you today, brethren, there is no stormers in heaven. Therefore, we need to understand your invitation says a lot. And what is your invitation? Jesus says in John 6, 37, him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. But you see, in order to get the specifics of your invitation, the word of God must be in your heart and in your mind and in your being. The text says in John 5, 39, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they that testify of me. These, those are the words of Jesus. So when you get it, when you get your invitation, take note of the specifics. You need to take time 
to pay attention to the date and the time. And since we are speaking parabolistically here this evening, there must be no procrastination when it comes to your salvation. I'll repeat it. There must be no procrastination when it comes to your salvation. Because the text, Jesus himself says in Matthew 13, 32, but of the, that day and of that hour know it, no man, nor the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Therefore, my dear friend, we are counseled. We are counseled in Luke 12, 40. Be ye therefore ready, for in an hour you think not, the Son of Man shall come. In addition to that, some of us say we have time. Have you ever put down an invitation to a wedding? You have been given the, adv the advice. You have been given the information. You have been given the invitation early. And, and that is one of the mistakes that plenty of people make. You have to keep the thing in front of you because the possibility exists in our human frailty. You're going to forget and you may miss the date. God help you if you miss it as the husband. That wife will never forgive you easily. Eh, eh, I see six women, I open big. And before I could finish my sentence, the don't shake their head. Yes, we go put it on the man. I know that. I know that very well. What? There are some things, gentlemen, online. And those of you here, that you must never, some mistakes you must never make. Do not forget the first day you met. Do not, <laughs> take it, you think it easy. Do not forget the first day you met. Do not forget this woman's birth date. Do not forget the wedding anniversary, Lord have mercy on you. Do not forget your children's birthday, especially if you see that female have a special love for that child. I mean, it's both of you, both of you take to bring it here, right? Bring them here. But check it out. You forget it. And you go about your merry business. A kill boy, oh, yeah, yeah. pressure in the Panama. Let me tell you something. They're going to look at you and wait for you when you reach home. And you they swell up and they're facts. And you're trying your best. You're trying to pacify. What happened? Nothing. What happened? Nothing. I tell you nothing. And all of us know, if nothing happened to you, you can't behave like that. So something wrong. And then when they calm themselves, they look at you, fix in the eye. You didn't know today was my birthday. You didn't know there was anniversary. You didn't know so and so birthday. And then start and pour you. Ooh, cool. So if you know you tend to be a, a forgetful Friday, Please write down what you need to know for me, please. So don't forget it. Eh -eh. So I'm moving on. Life is easy and sweet, eh, people, but that is what Jesus will do in your life. He also says, I'm almost at the end too. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. If you were not told, you will say you did not know. But you cannot say you don't know because songs of praise ministry have been broadcasting it all the time. Prepare to meet your God. Verse 11 of Matthew 22 comes to this way. It says, the king saw a man without a wedding garment. And then he asked the question, how you come inside here without that garment? Now, <laughs> let's deal with the stormers. I said, there will be no storming 
in heaven. Why? Because you must have your ticket, you must have your invitation, and you must have the passcode. And that passcode is not found in a thing. It's found in a person. I'm going to tell you this afternoon, beloved, I'm tied down a bit, but when I reach this part of the message, I have to get animated. Let me tell you something. The Bible says in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Jesus Christ is your door and your ticket to heaven. Therefore, you must know him. You must have him. You must establish a relationship with him. And when you do that, God will say to you, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. No stormers. Wedding garment is indicative of the righteousness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In order for that to happen, John 3, 5 and 6, except you be born of the water and of the spirit, you shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So baptism is a key. That's not all. You must be willing to follow the specifics. How would you feel if you gave instructions to come to your wedding? You gave the map and some bright individual decided the place and you never looked at the map. You never read it. You didn't take time to find the place and when you when it's on the day, I think it's down here. I think it's down there and you go astray. And then you're trying to call the groom or call the bride or call the matron of honor, or somebody else. Hannah are trying to find. That is being ridiculous. That's wasting time. If Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, then follow what he says. And when you do that, you will get your reward in heaven. Revelation twenty two fourteen 14 says, Blessed are they that do his commandments. That they may have right to the tree of life and enter into the gates of the city. I say to you, my dear friend, it doesn't matter how old, how young, whether weak or strong, whether tall or short. God can give you power to walk in his ways. That's what this world needs. That's what this world needs, brothers and sisters. Straight. Matthew 7, 13. Straight. There will be no bribery. You know some people, if they know you, and you, they are the doorkeeper, they will say, hey, I know my, that my partner, man, and they, they have money, and they, they, they have enough food. Come now. And they bounce a hand. Go inside. There will be no bribery in heaven. <laughs> Matthew 7, 13 says, straight is the gate. You know what straight means? It means it calls for discipline. It calls for total surrender and obedience because there are some tests that will come to make sure you are worthy of entry. I want to close the message this evening by looking at a very, very interesting passage. And I'm going to read two of them very quickly, the first is found in Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8. And if you're online and you have your Bible, please find for me. The next text is going to come from Corinthians. And I want us to look at that. First will be Revelation 21, 8. And then Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And I will be reading in your hearing verses 9 and 10. Verse 8 says, the fearful, unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire that burneth with brimstone. That's the second death. In other words, you doing these things, you will not inherit the kingdom. But there is hope for you because if Jesus says, come unto me, and I will give you rest. If he says, come, let us reason together, then it means he can reason with you, give you authority and power, and you can stop doing these things. 
I'm going to read 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10. And then my closing text will follow. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. Hmm. Effeminate, a big word. But what does that word mean? Well, we have females among us who are females. But when a male thinks he's a female, that's a problem. Because no male that thinks he's a female, you don't have a womb. You don't produce eggs. You produce something else. And then you tell me that, uh, well, I, am, uh, I, I was born. And listen, I have a problem, friend. Because if you were born that way, and listen, I'm not here to condemn you, no. I'm here to talk to you man to man because I want you to understand that when you tell me you were born this way, if we were to do a physical examination, you still look like me. And therefore, my dear friend, you are not born this way. You are either abused or socialized that way. We have some folks. You see, I believe in a God who can deliver and transform life. Yes, and I know that we have people in this world who have gone through that experience. I can quote him. I'm not afraid if it goes online because he has been saying it loud and clear. Most of us love Pastor Donnie McClurgan. You love to hear him sing, and he sings in a particular way, and, you know, and he ministers. But he had an unfortunate childhood, raped at age eight, then raped at age 11. And he thought that this is what this world was about. But then came Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo! Then came Jesus. And it says, hello there. I didn't create you this way. Come to me and I will change you. Yes, and when others closed him out, God opened doors for that brother. Today he sings about a savior. He sings about the power of the transformer. He sings because there is a God that put a joy in his heart. And when others condemned him, God gave a prayer to his life. That's why today, brother and sister, you online, you hear, I appeal to you. Nobody else in this world could love you more than Jesus. Nobody. Sometimes when your father and your mother see the, the, the output and your outcome in life, they abandon you. But Jesus says, when father and mother forsake you, I will take you up. That's why today, you don't have to be a sinner. Practicing evil, you can be a sinner saved by grace. And that brother that I speak of is doing just that now. Let me finish the text. It says here, no abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, and I, 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 get, I get angry when I hear some people talk. I believe that God gave the human family creativity. Could we agree on that? So many of us here in Trinidad have, and the world at large, we can showcase talents that God has given. But if God says that no reveler will enter the kingdom of heaven, it means, therefore, he is saying to all of us here, we must be circumspect and not profane. Some will be vexed. Oh, God, where you come there to preach? I came to talk to you because I care about you just as Jesus does. And I want you to know, though you may be out there, we have many who got called from the world and came to life eternal. 
Today, they are singing his praises and warning men and women to turn from sin to come to life. I say to you, I don't have an attitude of condemnation. No, I have an attitude to warn you so that when that time comes, you can't say you didn't know. Because my dear friend, I have been commissioned by the Savior to warn and to uphold and to encourage. Stay faithful because God can keep you till the very end. Amen. Going on. <laughs> it says, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. My closing text is a beautiful text. It's found in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 8. It's a beautiful passage. It says, He raised up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. You understand what I've just read? In other words, status has nothing to do with it because salvation is bought by the blood of the Lamb. And since he died for the world, it means that though you might be poor, he can make you rich. Rich in grace. And if he sees the need to give you additional blessings is giving it to you so that you can use it for his glory. If you're a beggar today and men don't want to give you a cent, God does move upon people to give you food to eat so that you can stay. I have tasted and seen that the Lord is God. If you are in the categories I have said, or you just want a change in your life and you're fed up with what's happening in your personal life. If that's your desire, I'm going to tell you this. God can only save if you are sincere in your request today. If that is your desire, I want you to raise your hand where you are as we talk to God for you. Shall we pray? Father, you said you have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn and live. You said, Father, those who come to you, you will in no wise cast out. And this evening, there are persons online and here who have raised their hands in an indication that they want transformation. Through the power of thy Holy Spirit, visit them, we pray. Meet them at the point of their need. Help them to realize that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Help them to understand that though men may castigate them and say all kinds of things about them, if you did it for Mary Magdalene, if you did it for Paul, if you did it, for others, you can do it for them. Because God, if you can take a harlot, change her life, and make her a part of your lineage, Rahab the harlot I speak of, then who are we that you cannot change? Is anything too hard for the Lord to do? I ask dear master that you'll have mercy upon everybody who heard my voice here this evening. And help them to know all it takes is a choice. All it takes is a sincere request. And if they pray that Psalm 51 with all their might, Father, not even the devil can separate them from the love that you want to give because you're going to come to them, bring deliverance and power, and restore them to the image you want. That's why we are here. Because you did it for us, you can do it for them. And what I cannot ask this evening, Father, you want to make us good so we will not be put out. What I cannot ask, fail not to grant, we pray, 
In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. God bless you. And remember, you are too good to put out. If he died for you, then you have worth. Stay in the grip of his grace. Have a good evening. We really indeed thank Pastor for such a timely word this evening. Make sure that you are well prepared for the wedding feast. Amen. Praise the Lord. Pastor, thank you so much for your word and for your encouragement. And we want to say thank you to all those who made it, made their way over at Songs of Praises to be live this evening. We want to say thank you, Lord, for having you with us. Firstly, we want to say thank God for holding back the weather and for giving us such a bright day that we can do God's bidding in Jesus' name. We want to say thank you so much to Kizzy. I'm really honored to be called uncle with such a niece like Kizzy. Uh, yes, Kizzy always is so dedicated in whatever she does and um. We thank you so much, Kizzy, for doing such a wonderful job of hosting for us today. Praise the Lord. We thank um, Sister Wendy and Sister Debbie for the prayer, for taking us through prayer this evening. Sister Rinis for that warm welcome. We had special music with Brother H on the instrumental and Kayla. Kayla, I'm so proud to see that you're growing gracefully in the Lord. Keep it up and keep singing for Jesus. Amen. Who we miss? Super Gran. Yeah? Super Gran, I'm proud to have Granny as my mother-in-law. And she's getting stronger, so she's giving us a fight now. In Jesus' name. But we're happy to know that she can fight. That means she's getting back her strength in Jesus' name. May God continue to bless you. We thank Zarian for always being timely and efficient with his quiz time. Praise the Lord. And we thank all the others. Did I miss anybody? No, we, we, I didn't miss anybody. We thank everybody. Akil, our faithful technician on the board, and Rinis, our coordinator, floor manager, making sure that everything runs smoothly. Thank you so much, Rinis. And we want to say hats off to all those folks who are around us. And I didn't take notice of Emilia by the door. She's making sure everybody's temperature is checked. And if you pass her straight, she'll come and find you. Thank you, Emilia, for doing a wonderful job. And we want to say hats off to all those who came this evening, Michelle and Lexi. And when I looked to the corner, I saw Miles. Miles just made my day today. Miles came in this evening. And Miles, thank you so much for coming by. And Miles told me last week, I will come. Don't worry yourself. And Miles is here. He's always a guy to his word. I'm, I'm happy to see Pastor Hamilton, my big brother, and Amy. And uh, my big nephew, Anthony, is sitting Next to them there, yeah? And, and um, Kyle and Kayla and Brother Georgie and Sister Patricia and, and uh, the big grandchildren now, big guys they are growing up into. And all the others. Brother Crawford, nice to see you. Sister Grant, always nice to have you spend time with us. Brother Desmond, Brother H, our faithful first elder that will make sure that everything runs in order. Thank you for being with us, Brother H. And to all others, who did we miss? Sister Vicky on the sticks. Praise the Lord. Akil, could we just get our audience view this evening? And we want to just say thank you so much to all our online viewers, all those who took time to be with us. We have our faithful U.S. ambassador, Sister Suzette Kutu. Sister Leah Nelson. Oh, Sister Leah. I was in Buenos Aires last week, Sister Leah, and I miss you so much. But I'm glad to see you online with us. Brother Bernard Bourne, Ruth Radha, Shelly and Diane Hunt. Hey, Sister Shelly, when you're coming south, girl. Harriet Ferguson, Diane Sedeno, Afisha. We miss you today in worship, eh? 
Hager Fellman, Lily Lucas and Mr. Carlton, Jason Rodney, F Jason Rodney Williams, Jason, I hope that you are putting that South Trip in place in Jesus' name. Tonya Hamilton, Inis, Jamila Alexis, Mary Garcia, Debbie Sampson, Patricia Gregg, Jamila Alexis, I said that, Renice Francis, Debbie Haynes, Lubyanka Kutu, Lee Joseph, Jeanette Medina Kupu, Jeanette Medina Cooper, sorry, Roger Dickey. Roger is part of us, but he's home based these days. Roger, we're missing you so much, boy. Come on down when you feel better and when things are okay at home with the family. Hope everyone is feeling better in Jesus' name. Justin Cardinal, Crystal Roberts, Natalie Seals. And if I miss anyone, anyone, forgive me. I didn't notice your name online. We want to say thank you so much. Remember, we love you, but God loves you so much more. You've done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. If I had 10,000 times, it still won't be Friends, before we leave, remember the invitation would have gone out to most of us online, but there's a Bible class on a Thursday evening, 6 p.m., with our Bible instructor for the Southwest Zone, which is Sister Paula Collins. It's a very interesting Bible class. Michelle, everybody get a link. And I know last week had some hiccups that some that the class was postponed because of a conference service. But come this Thursday at 6 p.m. They are starting the study of Daniel. If you are online and we don't have your number, please send your number to us and we will link you up with the Bible class on Thursday evening at 6 p.m. God bless you. Real good in Jesus' name.
curtains come and gone. And like the children of Israel, hallelujah, we cross the Red Sea. We in the promised land, the hard times come and gone. And like the children of Israel, hallelujah, we cross the Red Sea. We in the promised land, a land with milk and honey. You know we crossed on dry land. We crossed on dry land. We in the promised land. Victory in Jesus' name has come to us because we stood on the world. Because we stood on the world. Victory in Jesus' name has come to us because we stood on the world. Because we stood on the world. No matter what you're going through or how difficult it may seem, stand on the world. Stand on the word. The promises have not changed. They cannot change. God honors his word. So stand on the word. Victory in Jesus' name has come to us because we stood on the word. Because we stood on the word. Victory in Jesus' name has come to us. Because we stood on the word, because we stood on the word, God is not a man, and he cannot lie. Stand on the word, stand on the word, the word says he supplies your needs, according to his riches in glory. Stand on the word, stand on the word, the word says by his stripes. You are healed. Stand on the word. Stand on the word. The word says he never leave you. Ah, nor forsake you. So stand on the word. Stand on the word. Victory in Jesus' name has come to us because we stood on the word. Because we stood on the word. No matter how difficult it may seem, stand on the word, stand on the word, the promises have not changed, they cannot change, God honors his word, so stand on the word, victory in Jesus name has come to us, because we stood on the word, because we stood on the word. Jesus' name has come to us because we stood on the word. Because we stood on the word. God is not a man and he cannot lie. So stand on the word. Stand on the word. Stand on the word. 